Welcome to the Spirit Centered Business Podcast, where we blend the spiritual with the practical for supernatural results. Now, here's your host, Berlin Newby. Hello there. Welcome to Spirit Centered Business. I am here with Marion McLeod, my friend and an amazing coach and past client. And I am just so glad that you're here, Marion. Oh, thank you, Berlin, for having me on the show. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Oh, yeah. And I love her accent, too. Don't you guys? <laughs> She's from Scotland. Can you tell? <laughs> it's so funny to think that English is your second language to to Gaelic. <laughs> yeah, this is this is true. Yes, I I didn't speak any English until I was uh, six years old. Uh, my whole you know, neighborhood, my whole community, it was all you know, thinking in Gaelic, speaking in Gaelic, and it's slightly different to the Irish Gaelic, and the, they call it Irish Gaelic, and then there's Scottish Gaelic. Gaelic. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I just yeah, said it yeah. wrong. Okay. Oh. So yeah, just don't ask me to give you any examples right now. We'll do that another day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Well, we're actually here because we've noticed a problem, right? No, oh, we have. There is a problem that <laughs> the, the world needs a lot of Jesus and the kingdom kids need to step up and we need to understand how we can really affect change and shift environments just from our own selves and our family and our, you know, our circle of influence and our community and then beyond, beyond to the nations. So um, we're introducing a five day kingdom identity challenge because we just realized, wow, God has given us so many so many tools and we've been practicing and and learning and discovering and getting revelation on how to use these tools and we said we want to share this with the world so yeah that is a good idea that is a good idea because these have been um thoughts over many conversations over years now and also it's just it's a building factor in the kingdom right now uh, conversations that have to be had because we're endeavoring at this point to discover who we really are in Christ Jesus and just coming into that real seat of authority, something that you have spoke with, spoken about many times with many of your um, wonderful guests who have learned and gleaned so much from us well over the years. So it's really, uh, for me, it's like part of that working out our salvation, working out that um, with reverence and, of, and awe of a holy God that we serve. Oh, that's so true. Yeah, and and I know that this is this is going to be geared toward an audience who is not already necessarily operating from the kingdom realms. So those of you who are already, this is a great opportunity to bring your family and friends in because we're gonna dial back the whole, you know, heaven realm revelation kind of stuff and just come with foundational what the bible says what god says about you and how to operate as a son from that very foundational piece yeah 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 definitely it's about coming into our kingship and our place and our positioning in the body of christ at this time and there are different stages that we're all been at that we are all at and some of us have been for many years talking about um, these words we might recognize, like the ecclesia and our authority in God and our sonship, our kingship, our priesthood, all of these um, talking points, all of these revelations that have become uh, maybe just to a smaller part of the body of Christ, but God wants this revelation out to the world right now. He, he needs us all to, to come along together. So there's those who have gone ahead and planted the seeds. And then there's those of us who have gleaned, you know, some of that harvest. And those of us who go along and water others. And then there's those of us who just who just are, are ready to just you know, take in the harvest on all of these things and conversations as well. So we have uh, different roles. It's... Um, to help each other along as family in this process because it's we're all one bride we're all one 
partnership in Jesus Christ and learning how to position ourselves in that at this time is just it's so key there are so many people sitting in church pews as well inside of church and outside of church who deeply love Jesus who deeply love the Lord Jesus Christ but they know there's there's an element that's missing there's something else happening Mm -hmm. and heaven is we are having more and more heavenly encounters God is coming into our lives in new ways and many people don't have the language the words or to understand or make sense of what they have been seeing what has happened to them um so it is something again that we need to do in community that we have i've had these encounters i've had these experiences for many many years and since maybe 2004 very supernatural experiences that I had nowhere to put, nowhere to, no one to talk to about, no one to understand and, and no one to work it out with. And uh, that was a huge missing part for me. And for many years, it's been a growing process of finding a safe place to where you can actually open your mouth and where you can say, this happened to me. I saw this. I heard this. I felt this. What do you make of it? Because when we're left it to judge something on our own, it can become very, it can become dangerous. Or we can really miss something precious that the Lord has wanted to release to the world at this time. So that's why he asks us, you know, to work out our salvation in fear and trembling and awe of God. And also in the body of Christ, how, let others judge the word. And we want a place where we can bring that word and say, hey, this might sound really strange, but this happened to me, or I dreamt this and it's recurring and I don't know what to do with it. And so I think you, Berlin, as well as I am, are so used, uh, getting more and more used to hearing so many people saying these things. And, and many yeah. people have these wonderful communities where they can put this, lay this burden down, as it were. And it can be, a, it's a good burden. You know, it can be a good burden. It's something to unpack. And, um, but it can become a, a, an onerous burden if it's, if it's just left to yourself. And I had that for many years. I don't know what to do with this, Lord. I don't know where to put it. I don't know who will understand. And sometimes I went ahead of myself and said things to some people that eventually I wished I hadn't said. Maybe like, Joseph, when he went ahead and said, hey, guess what I dreamt about last night? And it didn't go down too well, you know. <laughs> I think I might have got chucked in the pit a few times. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's oh, part of it. Yeah, and I love, that, I love that you mentioned the community aspect of it because what we really want to create is a community, right? We, this is a five day challenge that launches into a six month program of king, kingdom positioning. So we, once we get our identity straight in this five days of working together every single day, learning and teaching, and then the VIP option, we're going to actually be practicing and, and doing some coaching and those kinds of things. And then it leads into this bigger community. And, um, you know, not only that, Marion, but <clears throat> excuse me, even the fact that you and I are coming together to do this so that neither one of us have to do it alone. We're, we're, this is like an example of how we can be in collaboration for the kingdom rather than in competition because we're each coaches yeah. and potentially we could have the same clients right yeah but yeah, we're, yeah. we're choosing to not be in competition we're being in collaboration and we're creating something that neither one of us could have created alone for the benefit of the kingdom and so we're we're being an example of what we want to teach people about their identity having to be in um, community and we're we're built for community we're built for relationship and then going through the iron sharpening iron process yes. together you know so that like you said you have this safe place where you can learn and practice and um you know hold each other accountable to make sure that we're still operating on biblical foundations and not getting off into something that isn't kingdom you know 
<laughs> exactly. And I love, I love, yes, we are both coaches and we have different audiences and whatnot as well. And my heart is really for bringing those in who are feeling lost, lonely and isolated in, in places of obscurity. And I'm not just meaning geographically, but in the spirit, they might be surrounded by people and feeling great loneliness and great yearning, hunger and frustration for the things of God. Because there is no doubt about it, the kingdom is invading earth right now. And it is, and everything is shaking. There, everything that can be shaken is being shaken and within ourselves too. And judgment comes first to the body of Christ. And, you know, we need to be so careful and we need to walk in really um, reverence and awe right now of the Lord and the spirit of the fear of the Lord, uh, allowing, him, allowing that spirit to teach us um, the way that we should go. And it is a wonderful thing to be able to do a collaboration as well. And because that's the way, that's the way God wants it. You see in part, I see in part, and then we bring other people in and we have a hundred people who see in part. And it's like, we get, we get dimensions of God of this beautiful, like um, I heard somebody say once, if God was this huge multifaceted diamond and turned really slowly. And there were so many, factions or facets mm -hmm. or yeah it just turns and each one of them is like one of us and there's thousands and thousands and millions of them in and he needs them all to to glow and to sparkle and to move and we all have to show up and and shine and we've all got something to say and I learn from everybody I speak to once we get into talking about the things of the spirit it's so deeply exciting God comes in and moves and when we don't feel like showing up and when we feel like we've had enough and there's too much resistance and I'm not going there and it's too much trouble well guess what he said you're going to have trouble in this world so you know, it's good to have somebody like you have done for me to say, listen, I get it. You know, I understand it. It's, it's hard. There's going to be this, that, and the next thing. But, you know, I've got you. God's got you. We've got you. Let's see how you feel. I'll, get, I'll give somebody the opportunity to breathe and also and to feel that it's okay to not know where to put everything. All the confusing feelings of what I should be doing. I'm not in church or I am in church I'm, or I don't like what I'm hearing in church or I, you know, I'm, I'm desperately lonely and I'm ostracized because people say I've left the fellowship of the, the brethren. And they, they, sometimes we take one verse out of context and just slay somebody with it. And, and that hurts and it's so painful. And that's not God's way. We are all gems and diamonds and treasures in his sight. And each one of us has a different facet. Facet, you said? A, a facet, yes. Facet. F A C E T. Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> sure. You know, and um, we're both coaches. So, like, all of this without action is dead, right? Just like, right. Right. you know, is it James, James chapter 2? Yeah. Faith without works is dead, as the body without the spirit is dead. Well, so is coaching without action steps. It's dead. So that's something that we we want to bring to this as well, to be able to coach each other into a place and, and to encourage each other, because God is requiring courage of us at this time. Because the opportunity to come into our kingship, our kingdom identity is enormous. It's exciting. And when our eyes are fixed on these things, Berlin, it's just like it's um, everything that is going on in the world just fades away. Right. You know, there's that old part of the hymn that says the things of this world, they grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And that is my testimony. It, everything else just got boring. When you start working with this stuff, when you start getting into this stuff, there's nothing. There's no drug. There's no alcohol. There's no temptation on earth that can um, actually override what you're working with the spirit of truth, which is Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And, you know, to have a community of like-minded people, um, which the Bible calls the ecclesia, and that's, and that's another thing. And some people know that word well. Some know it moderately. And some barely just heard it touch. And we may all be in the body of Christ. And yet the Ecclesia in different translations is mentioned 113 to 120 times in the New Testament. Everywhere it says church. 
right? So we have sort of watered down this version of what we call church. and We've created a building and a, um, a site sometimes, but what a physical site, and if you're not in the physical site, then things aren't happening, but we know that's not the way God set it up. You know, the ecclesia, which will be going really, you know, we'll be going into in this and it's such an exciting subject when we understand what the ecclesia really is and that we are to be ruling and reigning and positioning ourselves in the gate we are the called out ones and we are the ones to say no i don't like this law that is being set up in my government actually we reign we rule and you know it only needs two or three it only needs a small group it only needs a bench of Three. It only needs that small amount of people to get together and say no in agreement, in powerful agreement, acknowledgement and authority. It's another thing we'll be talking about, the authority of the believer. And um, because we're coaches, we'll be making some really practical steps. I'm all about, yeah, 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 that's fine, but tell me how to do it. If I don't know how to do it, you know, we can listen, we can fill ourselves up and feed ourselves with all kinds of information. But unless we allow that to become revelation and to become our knowledge that we can actually work out in our lives, it's dead. It's it's just, you know, life's so short, Berlin. It is, it's fleeting. And we have such an opportunity here to rule and reign. And we'll get more into this, but it, I, I believe it's everything from the weather our local government, our national government, we work within our space, our matron, our authority. And as we're faithful with that, Jesus, the Father, increases it. As we work with that anointing, what we are faithful with, he gives us more. He gives us more also. Um, yeah, it's such an exciting time. It's a space to be in. Oh my gosh, it, it really is. And I, I love the way that you have, you're very thoughtful about how you're presenting it. And I, and I love that. I love your heart and I love the way that um, the way that you process things and bring it out and articulate it to the world. It's, it's just beautiful. Plus your accent. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that it would be really cool to just kind of quickly talk about each of the each of the five days that we're going to go through this. And, and let me just set, set a little bit of a foundation. It's going to be September, September uh, 19th through the 25th, 23rd, excuse me, Monday through Friday, September 19th through the 23rd. And it's going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern, which makes it 11 a.m. Pacific and 7 p.m. UK, correct? I get that exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. And so every day for one hour is the main challenge where we're going to be teaching and then giving you your assignment. There's a Facebook group available to post your assignment. And then with the VIP people who, who sign up for that extra opportunity, then we're going to go an, another hour and do Q&A and actually practice what we just taught and and work it out together and kind of coach through that um bit so um and if you're listening to this podcast in the future check back to spiritcenteredbusiness.com because we might be running this challenge again you know or there might be a different challenge you might be interested in right now uh we don't have any other ones planned but we don't know what god has planned because uh, i think this is the <laughs> I think this is a really good challenge and and I think that everybody needs to can always go deeper into their authority and and understand the more of who we are how we're created to have power and authority in the world and how we're supposed to be God's hands and feet and be the expression of Christ and have the mind of Christ here on earth. So mm -hmm. there will always, there will be something on spiritcenterbusiness.com under the work with, work with us tab. Um, it will be there either that or for right now, you can go to spiritcenterbusiness.com forward slash identity for this particular challenge. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of forward thinking housekeeping for those of you who are listening after the fact. So this is how it's going to run. Um, why don't, why don't you just run through each day, like day one, day two, day three. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. And I, I just want to say, I say again, I know your audience is well versed in these things and many of us can be, will be, and there are different levels of this. But this is another thing I would encourage people to do, even if this may look foundational. And um, it, it's only foundational when we keep, you know, what we know is so rich sometimes that we don't know what we know. We don't know what mm. we know. And so when we turn up with what we know, when somebody says something and somebody else triggers, triggers something in somebody else and then somebody else realizes, oh, that's an answer to something I've been wanting to know. It's all these different levels of knowledge and revelation in that kingdom space that make it exciting so that I would encourage those who are um, keen on the kingdom, love the kingdom, are working at, um, out already their their truth in the kingdom or practicing thy kingdom come and seeing it already it, what a wonderful thing it would be to come in and just share your knowledge and to be with us in this challenge and to be part of a community that wants to grow and and to practice um sharing what you know as well so it's 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 a it's a community of sharing and learning and um being together in family is really something i, I like to highlight and I love all because somebody who's just been a Christian five minutes can have an awesome revelation of something that somebody has been a Christian 25 years with and wondering where what box do I put that in? And then so there's not it doesn't matter as to what I'm trying to say is whether you have been your brand new fresh Christian and you you're not really sure of all the language of it, you don't have to be. I mean, this is again, it's spirit-centered, spirit-led. It's um, this was God's idea, and this was uh, something He challenged us to do. So, day one appropriately is called the opportunity. So, on day one, on the Monday, the nineteenth, we'll be talking about the opportunity that we have set up um, before us. Uh, we've touched on it a bit already about the language and some of these uh, truths uh, that are really. Um, what we want to really do is begin to root and ground them in our lives and uh, in, a, in a coaching sense as well, so that we are working, we are taking action on everything that we are talking about. So we have, um, let's say, Matthew 16, 18 there. And Jesus said, and I tell you that you are Peter. This is a word to us all. And on this rock, I will build my church. In the Greek, that word is ekklesia. Again, we'll talk more about the authority of that. And the gates of hell will not prevail against you. They will, they will not overcome you. And again, doing that in community is so rich. That's what the early church did. They met in small communities. They chewed the cud of the word of God. They, they talked about the wonders and signs. And as you do, the Holy Spirit comes in and breathes on it. And things happen and life gets exciting. So uh, the opportunity is all there. And, and day one, what is uh, available to us um, as we are seated in Christ Jesus as we come into um, the kingdom, as we become a Christian and maybe don't understand the wholeness, and neither do we. We're not saying we understand the wholeness of all of this either, but it's a journey again of sharing and it's one that we have to do together. Now, the world, the evil that we see and everything, they are so organized. They get together and they talk about all um, the hellish things that they can do, believing and knowing that they have a power and authority in evil as well, because they do, they exercise and access that, um, that, that power, which is a fake power. It's um, everything that Satan does is counterfeit. It's a copy. And, and, they're so, and they're scared of us. They're scared of us because, but so many of us haven't stood up and said, this is who we are. And this is what we want this community to do. Know your opportunity. We're coming in on the offensive and with a winning attitude because no matter what's happening, we win, we overcome. So that's the opportunity uh, really on day one. Was there anything that you'd like to add to that about day one? Brent? I think you really did a great job covering it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just um, three points on that is basically knowing who you are, submitting to who you are, and then exercising who you are. So that's what we're going to be, that's what we're going to be working on. 
And then on the second day, we're going to be looking at shedding, the shedding mm -hmm. of all the stuff in and around us in our whether it's uh, body and soul and spirit and just learning how to shed that old man and renewing the mind and allowing the goodness and the newness of Christ that we were born into to actually work its way out and how to do that um, and how to do it in family, whether it's releasing religious spirits, political spirits, um, false humility is a big one. Um, at this point, you know, God is requiring our courage. So we're going to be looking at some of the hindrances and stumbling blocks that are really keeping us back. And again, it's it's coaching as well. So this is the, the wonderful part of it. We will be busting these lies. We will be shredding the enemy's um, strategies and we will be bringing in strategies from the kingdom that is kicking him to the curb. So the shedding is a very exciting uh, conversation as well. And then on day three, I have to say, is one of my favorite things. It sounds like a comfy comfort blanket, but in one way, it's sort of the opposite. But it's we're calling it the safe place, and it's it's uh, for a reason that everybody needs a safe place. I know I certainly did. I was holding so much within me. I just I knew that there was people all around the world. Um, I never felt like. Elijah who said, is it only me who's here? And God said, no, there's 700 more of you hiding in the caves and all on their own as well. So from the word of God, I knew, I knew, well, if it was 700 when Elijah was there around, there's 700,000, et cetera, maybe a million of us in the world at this time who are feeling that we don't have a safe place. We're either laughed at, ridiculed, um, put down upon, called mavericks, pushed out, uh, or just simply misunderstood by what um, religious conformity and tradition has, you know, has become and formed us into. So the safe place is really, there is nothing outside of the box here. Nothing. I, I'm not even sure there's anything that surprises me anymore. Everything is okay to say. And then we can, we can take it and judge it in love and in, in community and in a really safe place. So where we are, uh, whereas maybe we turn up in our local church and everybody, how are you today? And it certainly used to happen to me. Oh, I'm fine. Every, everybody's fine. It's about every, I'm well, how are you? And then you get in the car and you're screaming at each other or you're crying or your heart's so sore and you didn't find a safe place where you could be vulnerable and lay your burden down. Well, this is different. Things have changed. There's been a shift, guys. There has been a shift. We are called into the safe place in his everlasting arms. And uh, he's trusting us with his bounty, you know. And I take that so seriously uh, because I have been the bruised, broken, pushed down, pushed aside one so many times. And yet he has gathered me up again and he has held me until my heart and God came back together and I could raise up my head again and speak you know so um he is calling us to a place of that fearless confidence right now and in tribe in together as you know as one we, mm -hmm. we can do it so that is a uh, part of day three that's just a small part there's going to be so much expansion on all of this so much acceleration as well i have to say it's it's on all these things right now so uh day four day four day four is um, what we're calling really the practice zone. Uh, again, what we're talking about, it's uh, the kingdom of heaven is going to be, it's a place of practice. It's a place of exercising. It's tools. The Bible is full of tools. And as coaches, we love tools. Um, we work with tools. <laughs> tools, are, tools are great in our hands. And a good workman uses tools. And even when he's not confident with them, he has to start somewhere. He has to put something into practice. You start, you start chipping away, you start moving on something. And before you know it, something is forming, even when it looks like a mess. Uh, when we do this and somebody else sees something you don't. And in community, we have blind spots where, the, sorry, we have blind spots where in community, these can be so um, brought to light in a safe place and where we can, Say, no, you're understood here, you're accepted here, you're blessed here, let's talk about it. The Lord really wants that place, like he gave to the woman at the well when she came along 
and she she wasn't really you know everybody knew who she was and what her life was about Mm -hmm. but she wasn't really going around talking about and here's a man who read her mail sitting at the well and you know he wasn't shocked by any of that and and he said it's okay right now where where you are it's okay you're here the kingdom of heaven has come to you this day and this look every day that's the opportunity the kingdom of heaven has come to us so this is a place where we are going to stand in faith together and say to the kingdom of darkness this far and no further like i love from the lord of the rings um when uh, Gandalf, Gandalf yes yes I love that scene <laughs> with his staff and he says you shall not pass yes and, that's so powerful. And it's, oh my lord you know that really hits me and that is who we're supposed to be as the cold out ones the ecclesia holding up our rod of authority you shall not pass what we say goes now we haven't been doing this and there's small pockets across the world doing it and we have been practicing things as well in this these small pockets and we have testimony to these things Berlin which we shall be sharing yeah. when we have stood in our place of authority and practiced as ecclesia and brought heaven to earth and just seen things shift sometimes rupture first but there has been shift there's no doubt about it so the practice zone is really important we're practical we want to do this and um, uh, yeah so we're not staying stuck we're moving forward and then, and then day five, again, is about the challenge, the ongoing challenge that God is calling us to. You know, he's um, asking us to come together as wing women and wing men to each other. And the time is now. And that's a call into community as well and, and how it works at this time. No more isolation. No more loneliness. No more feeling stuck. No more out there on my own. I have a voice. And your voice is so precious. Either it, it's not it's about learning your identity and the beauty of who you are and accepting who you are submitting to who you are as well which is um so super exciting uh so yeah that's it really we're going to be a a bridge this this challenge is a bridge over from you know just having some information knowing something or even having some good revelation of it and then taking it and either sharing that revelation with others who desperately need it or, or who are really hungry for it and want to move forward at this time um yeah i could i could go on it's just <laughs> so it's super, super exciting to me it's my space oh my gosh it's going to be great i'm i'm so excited to do this with you because i think it's just it's so needed and necessary right now and i really haven't seen another challenge like it you know, and um, it's time. It's, it's time. time. It's time for this, the maturing of the sons. And like we were talking before we got on camera, um, you know, all of creation is groaning. The whole world, there are so many different systems that are uh-huh. in a desperate place mm-hmm. right now. That is not only creation, but the world is groaning for us to stand up and say, you know what, my God can solve this problem. And, you know, he, his arm is not too short and it's us who have to do, like you said, on day two, that shedding that we have to get rid of our fears and doubts and all of those things that hold us back so that we can step into this true identity and do something about what's going on in the world. You know, it's going to take us locking arms, but we have to be all trained up together as, as equal, you know, as soldiers for the kingdom. And so, um, Mm. Oh, this is going to be good. Going to be good, Marian. Love it, love it, love it. So again, you guys can go to spiritcenteredbusiness.com forward slash identity to go ahead and get started because, you know, we need a drum roll. We need a drum roll. It's only $15. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) So we, we purposely priced it so that it's not out of anybody's range and and it's available and attainable for everyone. So that's why um, that is priced that way. Yeah. And it's going to be life changing. It really is. And we come out open hearts, open eyes, open ears. And, and also that 
whole beautiful thing of learning to, you know, knowing how to hear God's voice and knowing how to turn up and show up and be who you are and who he called you to be at this time. Because as you know, one of my biggest fears, um, Berlin, was I've shared with you many times, is that my gifts and talents would be left in the ground. Right. And this is just, you know, calling all, all of you who know there's a bigger call and a destiny on your life to rise up to that voice inside of you even if it's scary even if it's um you're feeling trepidatious and and trembling we all start like that we all have to come forward in that manner and don't worry because it's line upon line it's truth upon truth it's step by step it's safe and and god's saying come come and taste and see that god is good and if you trust in him you'll be blessed i mm, love that Okay, you guys, I hope to see you inside the five day kingdom identity challenge. Yeah, can't okay. wait. Thank All you right. for your time. You're welcome. Until next time, stay spirit centered. Peace out. Thank you for listening to Spirit Centered Business with Berlin Newby. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The next stage of doing business by being spirit-centered is coming together in collaboration, working with spiritual principles and knowing our destiny. Join our tribe at spiritcenteredbusiness.com and we'll catch you on the next broadcast. Peace out.